Thank you, Speaker. And I rise to speak on the Drugs, Poisons and Control Substance Amendment Authorising Pharmacists Bill of 2023. Now, this is a bill that has the purpose of amending the Drugs, Poisons and Control Substances Act to allow pharmacists to be able to legally authorise to supply, dispense and administer certain prescription medications without a prescription as part of a 12-month community pharmacist pilot. Now, it starts in October 2023. Um, the reason behind it is to provide uh, treatment to uh, people with certain skin conditions, um, uncomplicated urinary tract infections, or I'll refer to them as UTIs from here on, and uh, also to reissue contraceptives uh, to, to women, oral contraceptives. It will also allow pharmacists to um, extend their scope of uh, the immunisations they're able to administer for travel and other public health vaccines. And if the pilot is designed, and I, and I completely understand why this um, bill is here. It was designed to take pressure off the health system, which, particularly in rural regions like mine, are under enormous, enormous strain. And the doctors are no doubt overwhelmed. And in my office consistently, I have people calling saying they cannot get a doctor. If you've moved into the town of Warrnambool or Portland, uh, you actually can't get a doctor. So it's not about even being able to get an appointment. You actually cannot get a doctor. So people are bed blocking. Um, my own case of my mum in hospital needing to go into aged care, couldn't get her in because her doctor had gone on maternity leave, couldn't get another doctor. So sitting in an uh, acute facility um, just for, and I literally had to ring every clinic and beg for a doctor for my 91-year-old uh, mother. So that's how desperate it is. It really is extraordinary. So I get the whole pretext of this, but I am very concerned about the bill. And you know, with um, I obviously understand quite um, well UTIs from a nursing perspective. It's one of the most common things you uh, treat. But the reason I have reservations about this and why I support the actions of my um, colleague in, in, in putting the reason amendment for, forward to to um, make the bill be withdrawn and redrafted to take into account the feedback and the value of a two-year trial period. So I think the reason I'm so concerned is there's so little detail. There is uh, no plan of how it's going to be rolled out yet. Today it's June 21st. We go on a five-week um, break from the parliament. So this bill will go up to the upper house um, in August, yet it's supposed to start in October. Now, I've spoken to a lot of the uh, pharmacists who I have a deep regard for and respect of. Uh, I know their pharmacological knowledge is extraordinary, and they're the first people I always go to to talk with uh, about um, a drug or an interaction or effect for something that I, um, I need to discuss with them. They're unbelievable. So I know I have, they have the capability, but there's just no detail around how this will be rolled out. There's no information about the training that will be received. There's no information on what incentive, if any, when I spoke at the bill briefing um, and asked questions, I asked, will they be incentivised? No, the word was, we will be encouraging people to partake in this. So I couldn't even get clarification on that. And I also said at the bill briefing, can you help me understand the driver? Has there been an analysis of what conditions are going to the, ho to the doctor really a lot, and that could be put on this uh, program so that we take the pressure off where the pressure is being created with things that can be treated through the prescription, which is another is issue being prescribed by the pharmacist uh, or supplied, as, as is in cur currently the case with this bill. But I couldn't even get an answer to that. So they told us at the bill briefing the committee, the reference group, the expert panel, had only been set up that week, which was last week or the week before. I think it was last week. Um, so no wonder the pharmacists, and I've spoken to many in my electorate, I, I, I contacted them all and said, you know, can you give me your feedback? No wonder the pharmacists are coming back saying, look, we can do this, but we need some clarity and we need to have strong processes so we can be... Um, so we can be equipped to do it well and we don't have risks to the patient. We, they certainly have the capability, but they need some certainty and there's none there. And I don't see how that can possibly happen in the short time frame. There are trials that are taking place in other, other states 
but we haven't even got the time to um, look at the learnings from those trials. So it makes complete sense, as the member for Lowen put forward, that this be redrafted and take into account proper feedback and a, an evaluation to be done so that actual clinical trials can take place and see where the risks um, have taken, you know, where the risks are and, and this can be um, evaluated, patient outcomes can be looked at, um, proper paperwork is, is sorted. So, you know, there's no reason to do this wrong. Patients' health is something we shouldn't be putting at risk, and I, I just think there's way too much risk here. Now, I do see that the government have um, tried to address in Warrnambool the um, problem we have with doctor availability, and they've set up a new priority primary care centre. But what the doctors in the town are telling me is that that's just shifting the deck chairs because there aren't any doctors. So if they're paying doctors to go from clinics into that, the same doctors in the same area. There aren't new doctors that are um, coming in and, and doing this from what they tell me. So it's just shifting the deck chairs. It's not really addressing the problem. And that's what this bill is to me as well. It was a promise that sounded good prior to the election and they've done nothing typical of this government being lazy and not doing the work and actually putting together what needs to happen because bringing the legislation Order. in before the details have been worked out is one thing and one thing only. It's lazy. It's lazy because you do the work first Order. and then you put forward the idea, not the other way around. It's Member very for hard before the horse, but we see a lot of that and we see it with um, lots of other bills that I can, uh, can bring to the parliament's attention. But I won't take up the last three minutes I have available by talking about all the things they do um, to look good, but actually not deliver outcomes as a result of. So the, you know, these conditions like the urinary tract infections are really good um, things that could be treated by pharmacists, but pharmacists should be respected and given the structure that they can prescribe. And that's what uh, is happening in the Queensland trial. And so I don't understand why, if they really are genuinely wanting to take away uh, the pressure off um, doctors, that they're not looking at the extent that they are in the Queensland trial. Um, things like having... Uh, oh, the other thing I did want to talk about is what the pharmacist told me, that at the moment with the Labor federal government bringing in the dispensing drug... It's actually not irrelevant, um, thank you. Um, it's very relevant because the pharmacist told me why it's relevant, and I'll try and explain that. So if I come into the chemist and I need to get one uh, drug uh, a month, I'm going to be lucky enough to have to only come in every two, two months. That's great for me. And the chemist will only get paid from me once rather than twice. So they actually will have a reduction in income. And those that need it most, the most vulnerable who are on four or five antihypertensive, anti-diabetic um, uh, diabetic medication, etc. They already reach the threshold, the pharmacists told me, so they already get the assistance. So the income that will be lost will be from the more wealthy people who are only on one or two drugs, and they will get the convenience of not having to go in every, every month. But the cost goes back to the pharmacists who miss out on the income. So they will have less profit to be able to employ more pharmacists, so there'll be less people to be able to look at the UTIs, to look at the um, the, the, the person Fulindere. who's come into the uh, to the uh, pharmacy and needs to have a proper consultation, needs to have a consulting room, needs the attention to get the process right that the pharmacist very capably will do. But how can they do that if they're on a reduced amount of people that will be available to do that because of what the federal government are doing with their dispensing? Um, laws. So they haven't consulted the pharmacists. They've forgotten the people to talk to that will actually deliver this to take the pressure off the government. And that is why, whilst I understand this is a good idea, there's no detail that gives anyone confidence, particularly those people who have the capability, the pharmacists, to look after our community as they do extremely well and did, I might say, were the only people in the health profession that every single day opened their shops and faced the community and all the risks when we were quite worried at the time, they opened their pharmacy every day and said, you know, we will serve our community. So I feel like this is the thanks they get from the Andrews Labor government, that they're not even consulted. They're given more work. They don't understand what the training looks like, what the, risk, what the, what the parameters are that will help protect them from risk and they're not even told whether they're going to be incentivised in a financial way. So, you know, we can talk about $20, but in the, in the bill briefing, that certainly was not confirmed, and I specifically asked that. 
So whilst I want to see the pressure taken off our health system, I want more doctors in the region, I want to see um, a ways of incentivising that, which like we do with our wonderful Dr uh, Brendan Conan and Barry Morford, who are running training at the university, there are good things we can do. This is probably not one. <laughs>